I practiced this this afternoon and somehow like got a bit teary because that's what this cool place does to us all. So bear with me and I've warned that, you know, that to Maggie. Um, but to celebrate the 10th birthday of Cafe Omai, I've just prepared a, a short speech of reflection on my time living in this area and visiting the cafe. And I'd love to share that with you before handing over to Maggie for a few words. Very special day today. Yeah. Why? Because we're celebrating 10 years of Cafe Omai. It's older than you. Huh? It's older than you. Yeah. So technically the cafe is your older brother or sister. It doesn't have a gender. It's gender neutral. Yes. Non-gender. So we're having a big celebration in an hour. We just finished lunch service and what? we're expecting Why does it 100 say, people. Who's a monster? The cafe is a monster. Oh. Hello, my name is Leighton. Welcome to a very special video. It is the 10 year anniversary of Cafe Omai, oh which I call the monster. This store pumps and every customer who comes in always comments how busy it is it's like every time they drive past there's always a queue down the street so it's the stuff dreams are made of but we work very long and hard to get to this point and there's so much written about this store a swag of awards endless news articles and i'm going to start off this video by reading what they published earlier this month Institution celebrates. Brisbane Dining Institution Cafe Amai is set to celebrate its 10th birthday in September. The Anna Lee Vietnamese Eatery has become one of the city's most popular breakfast and lunch spots, loved for its authentic pho and bang mi and other traditional dishes. The cafe, owned by Maggie Nguyen and her mother Kim, will celebrate the momentous achievement with a bespoke line of merchandise created by a local artist and customer, a crispy duck bang me special of the month, and a one-off Sunday session featuring DJs and artists and a host of loyal customers. That kicks off in an hour, and we've got people coming in already. Maggie said her favorite part of the past decade has been the relationship she has formed with her customers while selling about 250,000 bowls of pho and half a million bang mees. because I do a lot of um, limited edition prints on my work. So I, I always do a certificate of authenticity for the original and if there's a series of prints, I give people a certificate as well. That's my business card.
What did you say this yeah. one was? <laughs> <laughs> Tom Thumb, everybody. Like these are full on, man. So, by the way, you don't do graffiti, do you? Or is no, that what graffiti. you started off? No, no, like, no, no, just a fine art background, man. Fine art, but yeah, like that cool though. Yeah, well, so yeah. you don't go tagging trains and no. Well, if I did, I wouldn't be able to tell you anyway. Right? No, no, that's right. <laughs> yeah, no, I get to tag this at the end, but um, yeah, that's not my background at all, man. Sort of started um, with graphic design, to be honest. Yeah, so workflow, man, this actually came from an original painting that I did like with uh, graphite and ink on paper. It was about half a meter by 800 um, as the original. Then I lay that up on the iPad on the wall and then just sort of rework it in a digital format um, from there just to see how it's all gonna lay up with the scale of it all. So similar to a tattoo, right? You start with all like the reds and the oranges and then you work it into the blues and just refine it. So I'll use all the Posca pens for that, sharpen off all of these details, work out like a, you know, the shapes and the dimensions of it all. Um, just, just overlay it, right? And so I want to have all black through here, so I'm just going to like sort of outline that so I know that black is, you know, going through this section here. Oh, actually, where do we find you? Oh, How do we find you? At I am Jacob John. Instagram? That's Instagram. Yeah. Um, website's IamJacobJohn.com. Yeah. General Loud now. And, uh, Post of dikes on mics on four triple Z, and somehow I'm feeling a little bit nervous, <laughs> even though I shouldn't be. I'm sure some of you will um, feel similarities with my tales. <laughs> Almost eight years ago, my wife and I moved to Annalee, and straight away we noticed the great looking little cafe on the corner. Yeah, give it up, Annalee! Woo! Go, Annalee! Woo! <laughs> now, we are the winner because we're all here. Now immediately Leonie and I agreed that we needed to go visit the cafe but the first few months living in our home were very busy until one Sunday morning I was taken for a surprise breakfast date to this little place called Cafe Oh My. I ordered the Vietnamese omelette and have not shut up about the house-made soy sauce ever since. <laughs> Give it up for the house-made soy sauce. <laughs> And while I have never been loyal to one and one only dish, Leonie has never strayed from the corn fritters. All who have been converted once we've insisted upon taking them to our favourite cafe on the corner. And even now they dare to come here without us, and with us sometimes when they're in the area. Over the years we have seen Cafe Mai grow from a little corner cafe into the large and bustling one that we see today. Introducing us to the idea of a communal table, the beautiful coloured aluminium chairs, and even putting in facilities to bake the baguette rolls in-house. I remember a call out on social media years ago, and I mean years ago, asking for recommendations of a baker or bakery as the cafe needed a larger supply of these crispy soft rolls to fill the now very popular lunch staple. Over the years, Maggie and the team have also engaged with local artists to create the very much photographed Oh My Lady by Tamara Armstrong inside when they did the big renovation. And I don't know if Tamara's here, but Jay. Yes, she is. And also you'll see her amazing portrait that she did of Maggie. And just this week, the new Octo mural has been completed on the outside wall by Jacob John, which is already becoming very Insta-worthy. 
And Jacob also designed the cafe's first ever merchandise with tote bags and teas, especially to coincide with this birthday milestone. We had the tenacity and the strength to show up each day and open the shop for the last decade. We fucking did it! Yeah. All right. <laughs> Steve. Thank you for supporting my dream from day one. From when this place was just an idea that I obsessed with and annoyed you with every single detail. Parking and doing drive-bys along Cracknell Road for more than six months and brainstorming how we were going to storm out Figueritos. <laughs> Thank you for leaving aside your dreams for my dreams. Thank you for being the best fucking ex. Because if, it, because if you were the biggest asshole, we wouldn't have had this place. <laughs> when we decided to part ways, we knew that this place was a gem and we knew that we wouldn't tamper it. It was a seamless breakup and internally we were both healing and it wasn't for anyone to know. And I still have customers at the counter asking about husband Steve. <laughs> you will always be my working husband. And between the two of us, we have totally got the queers coming in to check the both of us out. <laughs> and we know the gays love you at the counter. <laughs> it was just like yesterday that I was carrying you in my baby carrier and billing customers. Or even handing you around to my customers carrying you. Thank you for being patient with me while I'm working. And being true hospo kids. <laughs> I want you to know that you can do anything as long as you are true to yourself and put in the work to get there. My brother Leighton, or to me, will always be my brother Min. We are like chalk and cheese, and thank you for pushing the boundaries. I would have been happy being a small original shop if uh, my brother hadn't helped me to expand or you, all of you will be lining up out the door for a long time. <laughs> and also with the bread making, we were able to produce a better product. Food has always been the gateway for us to show how much we care and love someone. It breaks down barriers. I couldn't be more proud to be a part of this culinary landscape. Gammon mẹ đã giúp đỡ con và ủng hộ con vì mẹ. Con có ngày hôm nay, con không nói thường xuyên, con thương mẹ lắm. So you've just heard the story of Cafe Omai from Kate and my sister, but I thought it's time you hear it from me and how I fit into this whole equation. Well, truth is, I'm the guy to blame. I'm the guy who got the family into this mess. I'm partly responsible for creating this monster. 
that is Cafe Mai, and the mural just outside of the octopus. When I first ran into Jacob, he showed me a sketch on his phone, and I thought, that's interesting. But the more I thought about it, it makes so much sense, because in one of its tentacles, it is holding a spray can. That can represents Brisbane, and the octopus, aka the monster, is this store and its stranglehold over the Vietnamese dining scene in Brisbane over the past decade. No other Vietnamese store has come close to replicating the same level of success and attention in the media like this store has done. We've been so influential in the whole Vietnamese street food movement and we're one of the reasons why Vietnamese food is popular in Brisbane because we started this. We're the ones who started the whole pho and bang me and Vietnamese coffee for breakfast trend. We're the OGs and with more and more people moving up from Sydney and Melbourne and with a record amount of Vietnamese eateries opening up right around the city, when you have a look at all their menus, they've got something in common and that is they're taking the trend that we started from way back and running with it. And in all of this, I gotta say, I told you so. I knew Vietnamese food would be popular one day in Brisbane and I was right. I'm the blame guy. I'm the one who dragged the family up from Sydney. Originally from Cabramatta in the western part of Sydney and growing up, I didn't realize how privileged I was to be surrounded by what I consider the best Vietnamese food in all of Australia. That was the level and the expectation of Vietnamese food that I was used to. And it wasn't until I moved up here, what was it, 15 years ago, I was here on my first job as an engineer. I lived alone and I ate out a lot. And that gave me a lot of time to test the Vietnamese food around Brisbane. And that was enough for me to know that there was something very wrong about it. What was being passed off as Vietnamese food was, to my standard, offensive. And it really bothered me. And I was always on the phone to mum saying, hey, we really got to do something about the situation up here because it ain't right. And one thing led to another. I quit my job, so did my sister, and the rest is history. So you can almost say we're interstate contractors. We flew in overnight the mission to deliver better Vietnamese food for the people of Brisbane. We've done that, mission accomplished. You would have heard in my sister's speech, she never intended the cafe to be this big. She always wanted it small. And we knew in the first six months, this store where I'm sitting in, which used to be the old kitchen, it was way too small. We needed room to grow. And just a side story, where I'm sitting now, it used to be the old kitchen. And it wasn't any bigger than the size of a bedroom. And at any one time, there was like six to seven people working in it. And mind you, this is pre-COVID. So we knew we had a problem. And that's where I came in. I did all the back end deals with the old landlord to kick out the store next door, which used to be an old fish and chip shop run by, you guessed it, Vietnamese people. And gee, didn't they love us? And they used to complain, we're taking all their customers. But really, long story short, we got rid of them and I executed an ambitious plan to create a large kitchen. And just a bit of a side story, I gave the concept sketch to my designer, it was only on an Excel sheet, and the first thing he said to me was, hang on a minute, did you get your dining area mixed up with your kitchen? Because the kitchen's way too big. You wanna maximize the dining space. But I said, no, no, you don't know what I intend to do with it. And then 
Mum was furious. She's like, why on earth do we spend so much money on such a large kitchen? When are we ever gonna need it? Well, as the story turns out, this store is so damn busy. And it's times like that when people are queuing down the street, people are spilling out onto the road to collect their takeaway. It's times like that, no one ever thanks the guy who had the vision and the foresight to create such a large kitchen in order to keep up with the demand as well as to thrive creatively. So that is my contribution to this store. You would have heard Kate mention there was a call out for a baker in Brisbane to fulfill the ever growing demand of the Bang Me in Cafe Oh My. And that job was filled internally by myself. I'm the creator of the Oh My Bang Me. And I've told this story in a previous video, but I'm gonna tell it again. And the story goes, after dinner service, just like now, I would sit in the kitchen and make bang me. Whip up dough, watch it rise, sometimes till midnight, because I had way too much time back then. And I do all these experiments in search of the crusty bang me. And it took a while, but eventually I got it right and I put in a bakery inside the cafe to produce one item, the bang me. Now have a think about that for a moment. How many owners out there do you know that would have done the same thing? Most probably wouldn't. They would have outsourced it because it's too much trouble, too much money. Let's just get it from a bakery and retoast it when customers order it, which is how 99.99% .99 of people do it right around Brisbane, but not here. That's not good enough. We want the best for our customers which is why the bang meat is made in-house and baked progressively throughout the day. So can we hold one? Oh, and the last thing I want to say is for the thousands of people who come to Cafe Omai and enjoy a fresh bang meat each week, you're welcome. My name's Leighton. Thanks for your company. I hope you enjoyed this video. I may be the fur king, but I'm also the godfather of the Bangme in Brisbane. Bit of a long one today, but very important story I wanted to share. And I don't go out of my way to tell this, because I don't want to sound up myself, but it's such a fitting occasion. Hope you like it. Make sure to subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Oh, and by the way, quick message to all my aunties and uncles. Các cô, các chú, các bạn mà bán bánh mì bằng bằng Brisbane mà thấy dạo này đắt hàng không có chi.